A popular hybrid plant known as the clematis, a vigorous woody climbing vine, is a genus of about 300 species within the buttercup family. It's a plant horticultural expert, author, photographer, and nurseryman Raymond Evison has a particular fondness for and a talent to make it grow and flourish. In his lifetime, he has introduced over 100 clematis species. He writes books about them, most recently, Clematis for Small Spaces. It is my pleasure to welcome Raymond Evison to Studio 4 to tell us more. Fanny, thank you for having me on your program this morning. Well, how pleasant to meet the king of clematis. The headline says today, meet Britain's king <laughs> yes, of clematis. That's, that's uh, quite a compliment, shall we yes. say. Yeah, I think I've got a lot more to do to mm -hmm. achieve that title. Because I'm sure it's hard work growing clematis. And well, some people say clematis, I know. Yes, but I, I'm very happy, very relaxed, whatever people want to call them. The main thing that they enjoy them and they have sec success with them in their gardens. Yes. Did you grow up in a gardening family? Yes, yes. My father was a gardener and uh, I was involved with plants and gardening when I was probably about two and a half, apparently. Really? Yeah. Why this plant? Why clematis? I, I don't know. I, I, got, I got involved, really, with clematis when I was about 16. I had the great pleasure of going to the, my first Chelsea Flower Show when I was 16 and went with a marvellous nurseryman, a great plantsman called Percy Picton. And so I helped them on their exhibit in the, in the evenings. I was only 16, so I was only able to drink cider at, at dinner. <laughs> uh, but then we talked about mm -hmm. plants and clematis in particular. And he had worked as a gardener for William Robinson, who's the great old gentleman of English gardening, yes. uh, way back in in the early 1900s. So mm -hmm. he talked about clematis breeding and, and all of those things. And so I got really excited about them. So it's thanks to Percy who lit the fire under me. You know, I like that name, Percy Picton. Yeah, it's, it's great. And there is a clematis called Percy Picton. Is there? Yeah, absolutely. Who names a clematis? How are they named? Well, with, with our new cultivars, we, we name them. We have to think of something uh, that, that is going to be you know, very useful for, from sales mm -hmm. point of view. Um, I know one of the ones that we raised was called, we called it Arctic Queen. Arctic because it's white and, and Queen because it's very elegant. Uh, but all my three daughters have clematis named after them. So a range of different, different of reasons. Of course. Well, I know there's a Rebecca. Yes. Uh, Rebecca's an amazing red, uh, probably one of our best sellers at the moment. Uh, that we launched at the Chelsea Flower Show mm. a few years ago. But when Rebecca was only 18, I named one of my first hybrids Freckles because she had lots of freckles. <laughs> now she's 40 and doesn't have mm. so many freckles. Not so many freckles. No. But um, she and her husband came to Guernsey oh, seven or eight years ago, and uh, Rebecca said, Dad, please, can I have a Rebecca? Nobody knows that I'm freckles. So <laughs> I went with into the breeding house with Andrew, her mm -hmm. husband, and I said, Andrew, um, we've got to find a Rebecca for Rebecca, and you know her temperament, so it's got to be red, and he agreed immediately. So she's a fiery one, is <laughs> absolutely. she? Absolutely. <laughs> well, you can't have freckles and not be a little fiery. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And your other daughters? Well, so Anna Louise is, is a rather charming one, which is really a, quite a, a maroony red with a darker bar, mm. uh, and that flowers very well. Ooh, and that's then, beautiful. And then We're looking at Anna Louise yes, on the screen. And, uh, Francisca Maria has a, has a double purpley blue named after her. Mm -hmm. And does the madam of the house? No, I haven't found one good enough for Sarah yet. Okay, so <laughs> one day you'll have to do that. I hope so. I hope you so. know, Raymond, because <laughs> she'll be asking. <laughs> yes. Any lovely wife should. Are you invited to the royal wedding? No, no, no. I just have no reason why I should be invited. Uh, I've met the, many of the royal family because of my role as a vice president of the mm -hmm. Royal Horticultural Society, but I haven't been involved with any of the charities that His Royal Highness uh, Prince William is involved with, so I had no expectancy. Darn. To, to, yeah. Did you go to Lady Diana's? <laughs> no, 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 but I met her many, many times. I'm sure Sure you mm. did. Mm. Did you name a clematis after her? No, but there is one named after her, Princess Diana, uh, which is a lovely, a lovely, uh, it's a Texensis one, which is a tubular flower, so it's, ra it's rather charming. Very mm. nice plant indeed. I'm sure. Uh, the royals. At the Chelsea Garden Show, I know the, the uh, Queen Mum and the Queen, they all loved gardening and they love horses too but they Absolutely. love their gardens they, they, yes they do and i've met her majesty many many times and uh, in fact her majesty has our clematis in buckingham palace at windsor and a balmoral really and I, I was asked to go to balmoral to advise on the right clematis for for balmoral and so i had a, a great um, a great visit there met her majesty there and so we talked about the mm. garden and talked about the clematis and, and I and hope that they're growing because I really don't want to be taken to the tower if, if they don't grow. No, exactly. <laughs> and Prince Charles, of course, is a big environmentalist. 
very yes, interested absolutely. yes in well he's very greenery. much he's the patron of what, what is now called uh, uh, the, the heritage plant heritage mm -hmm. um, and very much in, involved and um, he also has some of our clematis in his garden in Scotland see I think you should be invited to this wedding <laughs> <laughs> we may have to write a note do you think so <laughs> I do but I know that no, uh, I think there are many you can't people, go to everything when you're people, busy far more worthy than me who should be there okay and when you're busy growing plants you have a major your nursery in uh, in uh in the Guernsey Islands? Yes, on the Where? island of Guernsey. On the we, island of Guernsey. Yeah, we have seven acres of glass houses. We have about 20% of the world market for young clematis plants. Um, so it's a, it's a fun, it's really like a factory these days. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's a great mm. uh, great business to be involved with. When did you start it? Like, well, the, where? The, the, the Guernsey nursery, that was started at the, in, at the end of 1984 when I started there. Really quite small. I didn't expect it to be as large as it is now. Um, but it, it really has been, I've been mm. extremely lucky how the business has developed. Um, it's taken me to many places around the world and I have the great opportunity to go in looking at plants in the wild in China and Japan mm. and of course the United States and uh, haven't been into been plant hunting in, in Canada yet but one day when I retire. Yes, well I think it's time. Uh, tell me about growing a clematis. Well, the secrets. Well, I think the, the, the secrets, Fanny, are really people very often hear about a clematis and they have mostly a, a, maybe a south-facing wall. They go out to a garden center and they buy a bit of a wooden trellis and put it on the south-facing wall, <laughs> put the clematis in, and then they say, why doesn't it grow? Well, clematis love a microclimate. They love to grow with other plant material. So if you have a wall, then you grow some other plant material on the wall, even if it's a north-facing wall. Really? And then you grow the clematis up through it. Because uh, their roots like to be cold well, the, the roots or because like they be, like shade? To be what? shade. Yes, but if, when I'm looking at plants in the wild, uh, then you see that the roots have got tucked under maybe a rock or some mm. scrub or something like that. And then they grow naturally up through other plant material. And that's how clematis like to go. And they love how other plants planted by the root system or around the roots, again, to shade the roots, but also to create that microclimate. And how much water should they drink, or do they drink? Oh, yes, they, they like plenty of water. And if you're going to grow clematis in a pot or a container for a patio or a deck garden, then plenty of water. But the container must have a really good drainage, absolutely vital. And mm. clematis like um, plenty of feed. You can use a rose feed or a tomato feed. Very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Well, simple for you. <laughs> yes. I have the odd dead clematis. You know, I don't know what I, I did wrong. Know. Well, Fanny, you should be growing some of the ones that we bred. And <laughs> I, I guarantee it. they'll grow for you. Well, how do you know that, like when you're, uh, you're almost like a scientist of the clematis, mm -hmm. right? So now you're, uh, it's a hybrid, which means you do what? In well, your in special in, lab? In, 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 well, not in a lab, but in, in our right. breeding greenhouse. Each year we will carry out two and a half thousand crosses. That's pollinating one plant with another, one father with a mother. That will generate us between 25 and 35,000 seeds. We'll get maybe eight, 9,000 seedlings. So when I go back, we've timed them. They've been in the cold store. So early June, we'll be looking at 9,000 new clematis plants. Really? And only when uh, after eight to 10 years, because it takes us eight to 10 years to trial the plants to make sure, like this one, Angelique, that they're going to really perform well. Uh, and so we will throw away uh, you know, 98% of all these seedlings okay. that we grow. I bet you compost. Yeah, we compost. Yes. <laughs> An no, expensive compost. A seed. gardener of your ilk would not throw away. <laughs> Somehow you save it. Uh, seed collecting. How is that done? How are they stored? And like okay, well heritage the, seeds from because yes, well, well the, the clematis is a very old plant, right? Oh yes, absolutely. Well, the the the, um, the early ones were introduced in originally from Europe into England in the mid 1500s, and then the main breeding work really started in the 1800s. Um, so really, um, they are a very long-lived plant. They've been about for, for, for a very long time. Mm. But we've really focused on developing plants uh, that are more compact, that are freer flowering, flowering for a longer time. And that's what our breeding work has been about, to create mm. a plant where people can have much more success with, with the yes. plants. Yes. And are they evergreen? Will they go through the winter in Vancouver? No, there are one or two evergreen uh, species. Uh, Clematis armandi is grown. I, I see that growing yesterday 
when I was here in Vancouver. Right. We call it Armani. Okay, well, <laughs> I do. I, do. But I know it's Armani. Arm so there, there are one or two species, mm -hmm. one or two hybrids that are evergreen, but all of the cultivars like this one, Angelique, and the ones that we're breeding in development are all deciduous, so right. they lose their leaves. And they can, they're quite winter hardy in your winters if they're planted in, in the soil, in the garden. Right. But if they're going to be growing in a container, they need to have a really al an almost a frost-free mm -hmm. uh, sort of situation dur during the winter, and then can be brought out in the spring. What is your garden like, your home garden? Well, our, our home actually is quite interesting. Uh, it's a pretty ancient house. Our kitchen was built in 1350. No. And so my wife and I are slowly restoring the, the old house. Um, and likewise with the garden. In the, the garden itself, we've rebuilt a 70-foot lean-to glass house in Victorian style, so with wood and with mm. glass. And we do round and hollow glass. Um, round and hollow glass, I think, is very typical of what uh, one uses in the Channel Islands. The aim yes. of the round and hollow glass is all the, the rainwater runs down the centre of the pane and it keeps away from the wooden glazing bars. So we've rebuilt that in Victorian style, so we have apricot and peaches and gauges mm -hmm. all going there and vines growing in there mm. and on the north side of the wall and again part of that wall was medieval and so I'm growing espalier pears and I'm growing um, the red currants growing them up in a, in a U sort of shape and likewise with gooseberries too but I spend most of my time at the moment um, on my field banks. In Guernsey, our fields are divided by field banks, by hedge banks, and so there I'm doing a lot of conservation work with the wildflowers, with primroses, with violets, and uh, with wild strawberries. And uh, by law in Guernsey, we have to cut our roadside hedges twice a year in mid-June and mid-September. Mm -hmm. And I do all this with a hand, with a hook, the old-fashioned way. And it takes me eight days to trim my hedges and, and, and my dwits. Our, our streams mm. are called dwits. So I, I, you know, I love conservation work. And my dream yes. in our wet meadows is to have the terrestrial mm. orchids, the wild orchids growing again. So uh, that's, that's a challenge for Orchids? For, yeah, yeah, the terrestrial orchids. Really? Ones. Terrestrial mm. orchids? All... How fabulous. As you know, in uh, uh, Canada, we're trying to bring back our grasslands. It really uh, are you. Yeah, certainly well, on the, in the drier yeah. spots, yes. in the ash crops, yes. up in the inner parts of British Columbia. Yes. And, yeah. of course, save the boreal forest and, yes. and go back to what used to grow here. Yes, well, that's right. And, the, and, and some uh, of it still and, does. And with but uh, with the, the wet meadows and mm -hmm. a lot of quite an area of my fields, I still use the old-fashioned scythe, you know, the scythe with the big blade, mm -hmm. like, like this. It's very good for trying to keep yes. this under control. Well, under and I think control. you'll live forever, but like conductors. So? <laughs> well, you know, because gardeners, you're, it's it's a lot of work. I'm a bit of a dilettante gardener. Yes. I like somebody else scything yes. and <laughs> doing that. But, uh, yeah, it would be, it's very good for you because fresh air it, and it's it up is, and down yes. and... So I travel a lot to promote our clematis, but my always my mm -hmm. I look forward to getting home and getting in my fields. And I'm sure. I have an old Massey Fergie tractor, and that's that's my mm. great joy too. Mm. Do you have uh, any animals? Oh yes, we, we have um, only two cats, but uh, uh, but we we have heifers and sometimes bullocks that come into the fields during the winter. Uh, mm -hmm. They are looked after by a farmer who rents some of our fields, so we don't have to worry about those. How but they lovely! So, they sometimes get out, so that's a right. challenge. Right. Yeah. Well, you couldn't have a goat. Because the goat would probably eat the clematis. <laughs> yeah, I, think so. I mean, that just wouldn't work out. Uh, the Josephines and the Shimmers and the Rebeccas would not yeah. be around. And the small clematis, the shrub, your new book. Yes, well, clematis for small spaces is about really growing clematis in a small city garden or a town garden, or clematis basically for small spaces. And okay. um, the Boulevard series, the Angelique, the Picardy, Suzanne, and those ones are ideal, only growing three to four mm. feet, so they're ideal for a small garden. And the great thing about them, we've really invented, uh, Fanny, a, a new pruning technique because the pruning is very complex, really. Right. You know, pruning one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. So the new ones, what we do is advise our, our garden gardeners, our customers, in the spring they do the ponytail cut, they grab the plant like that and just chop it off six to nine inches above soil level. So simple, easy gardening. Okay. Well, you better mention that to the Majesty's Gardener. Do, do you think so? <laughs> and, and, you know, Charles and Camilla, because we certainly want uh, them to have a splashy clematis. I think so. Mm -hmm. You're here uh, doing many events. Uh, on April the 19th, you'll be at the Justice Institute mm -hmm. in That's Westminster, right. and you have to buy tickets in advance, and you'll be talking about, let me guess, clematis. Uh, absolutely, yes. How lovely meeting you. All my gardening friends are lit up that you're here. Well, Fanny, that's very kind. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me on your program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Raymond. And Everson, uh, meet Britain's king of clematis, says right here. I do. <laughs>